And all his wise men and Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. I saw, this is Revelation now, guys, I'm switching. I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, remember, Pharaoh was also on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed up with seven seals. So it looks a lot like this, likely. These are wax seals on a scroll. And in ancient times, they would actually seal up a section of the scroll and then continue to roll it and then seal up another section, continue to roll it. So as he breaks open each one, it's like a new chapter in the events of what happens in Revelation, which I believe is that seven-year tribulation period, which goes right along with Joseph's story, because what happens, there's a seven-year time of great trouble in Joseph's story, right? That seven-year famine, which covers the whole face of the earth, So we're seeing that in Joseph's story. And that's why the Old Testament is so good because it, when you understand the Old Testament and study it, it helps you understand books like Revelation, which nobody seems to want to teach through anymore in churches. So (laughs) this is exciting, you guys. So let's get back into the presentation. So here we are, Revelation 5. I saw a scroll uh, written on the inside back, sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look into it. Or even look into it. Isn't that interesting? This goes right along with Joseph's story. Watch this. This is so fun, right? So what happens in Genesis 41? And all its wise men, Pharaoh was looking for anybody, his soothsayers, his wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was none who could interpret them. And then here back in Revelation 5 again. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. Then I began to weep, John, the revelator describes. He began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Now, one of the elders, right? Verse 5 of Revelation 5. And one of the elders said to me, stop weeping. Behold, now what's happening now? The lion that is from the tribe of Judah. This is speaking of the Messiah, right? Always, he comes from the tribe of Judah. The root of David has overcome so as to be able to open the scrolls. Open the scroll and its seven seals. Oh, this is so awesome. Now back to Joseph's story. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh was troubled, couldn't understand what was going on with his dreams. Saying, so the cupbearer, the guy that was in prison with Joseph, right? The guy that was the picture of the other one on the cross. He says, now a Hebrew youth was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. So he previously described that he was in prison with this young Hebrew. And he, and we told him the dreams and the interpretation, and he interpreted, excuse me, our dreams for us. For each man he interpreted according to his own dream. Then Pharaoh sent word and called for Joseph, and they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon. What does that speak of, you guys? They hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon. This speaks of the resurrection of Jesus. This is so awesome. Right here in Joseph's story, we're seeing this played out right before our eyes. Isn't this amazing, you guys? The resurrection. It was like they rolled the stone away and said, come here, Joseph, the king who sits on the throne wants to see you. You've been raised, raised up out of that place. I love it, don't you? This is so good, you guys. Here we go. You know, I just... I'm amazed and amazed and amazed <laughs> how Joseph, and we're gonna next time we're gonna get into Moses and how he was like Christ, which is really awesome too. But Joseph is just 
There was just something about him, his character, that we all just loved, isn't it there? I mean, there's no one like him in, in the Bible. No one except for who? Jesus. Jesus is the one who's like Joseph. Now, Daniel a little bit, because both Daniel and Joseph had no record of sin. We know that they both sinned because they're sinners, but there's no record of it in the Bible, and they both interpreted dreams. So Daniel's a little bit like Joseph as well, but uh, Jesus, he shows the picture of Jesus. And what are we seeing right now? We're seeing the resurrection. He was dead. This is actually from the Shroud of Turin, which a lot of experts believe actually was Jesus. And somebody touched this up. There was blood here where the crown was, and this is, may have been what Jesus looked like when he was dead but he's alive now. Somebody else drew him alive. (laughs) So this could have been what Jesus looked like, you guys. Isn't that exciting? But here we are. He's raised from the dead, from that place of the condemned, that place where Joseph was destined to die, down in the dungeon, in that pit. But he's raised up out of it and brought before the throne. Now remember, Psalm 105 said the king sent, it was referring to Joseph, the king sent and released him, the ruler of the peoples, and set him free. He made him Lord of his house and ruler over all his possessions. Wow. Does that not speak of Jesus? Wow. So then back to the story of Joseph, Genesis 41, verse 15. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, but no one can interpret it. Remember Revelation again right there, right? Joseph then answered, to Pharaoh, saying, it has nothing to do with me. God will give Pharaoh an answer for his own good. God, right? I love that, how Joseph gave all credit due to God, to Yahweh, to the Lord. He gives credit to God. Very important, very important lesson for us. And Joseph then answered Pharaoh, saying, It has nothing to do with me. God will give Pharaoh an answer for his own good. I'm glad we read that twice. (laughs) So, Genesis 41, verse 22. I saw also in my dream Pharaoh's describing it. This is the second part of it. After the dead cows or the, the weak, sick cows ate up the healthy cows, right? And he says, I saw also in my dream, and behold, seven ears of grain, full and good, came up on a single stalk. So he's telling Joseph his dreams here. And behold, seven ears within, thin and scorched by the east wind, sprouted up after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. Uh Uh-oh. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God has told to Pharaoh what he is about to do. Now let's go back to Revelation again. Look at this in verse 7 of chapter 5. And he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. This is like Joseph interpreting the dreams of he who sat on the throne in Egypt, right? That's what we can see in this, you guys. It's amazing. So the overall arching thing of this whole chapter is how Joseph is raised up out of, out of that place of the condemned. Jesus was raised up. And then later, John has a vision, and it's called the Revelation or the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus, revelation is. And what does he see? He sees this scroll of these future events. Not even No one can even look at it or take it or break it open, break its seals open. But he, and he wept. John wept over this, just like Pharaoh may have wept that no one could interpret those dreams. But then what happened? That what happened was Joseph came and he was able to, He was found worthy to reveal those dreams, and he did. So not only was he raised up out of that place of the condemned, he was brought before the throne. He reveals the future events of God's plan, just like Jesus. And Jesus, John saw the lamb as though he had been slain, 
taking the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And he was filled with joy at that point. <laughs> and he said it was from the, the tribe, the lion of the tribe of Judah, speaking of the Messiah. So good, you guys. Hey, it gets even better because it doesn't stop. Joseph's story doesn't stop right here with the resurrection and him interpreting the future plan of God, just like Revelation. That's not the end of the story. God's plan was still unfolding. This is amazing, you guys, because things are going to shift in Joseph's story. You're going to see something amazing in the next episode because he's given a Gentile bride. Jesus also, for the most part, has had a Gentile bride for the last 2,000 years. But then what happens? We know that Ezekiel chapters 36, 37, 38, 39, we see Israel coming back. We see it in many other places in the Old Testament. We see in Romans chapter 11, Paul telling how when that last number of Gentiles comes in, then all of Israel will be saved. Wow. This is about the future, you guys. Now we're stepping into Joseph's story. We're stepping into prophecy, things that have yet to be fulfilled. And Joseph's story takes us along all the way through to the very end. And you're going to be so blessed by this, my friend. I know you are because I've been blessed too. And praise God for this. God's answer to us to reveal these things to us. Hey, if you haven't hit that playlist, hit it right now. This is How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You want to go back and check out all the previous episodes and you will be blessed by it. Click on that, that playlist right there, my friend.